Ryan Settles are here with Broadcast Beat Magazine, and we have Eric Iverson, Product Manager of Image Processing at Barco. How you doing, Eric? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day out here in California. And yourself? Doing great. Fort Lauderdale. So it's, not, it's a little too toasty here. While Barco does provide a wide range of vis visualization solutions for the broadcast industry, uh, there was one product that caught my eye during uh, the NAB show this year, and that was called the Image Pro 2. Would you mind uh, telling us about it? Yeah, so uh, Image Pro 2, uh, it came from the original Image Pro, which was a product uh, Folsom Research developed uh, back in, I believe it was 2001. And it was originally designed just as a, a switcher and a scaler for primarily the rental and staging and, and hotel industry. And Image Pro 2 is now that uh, uh, next generation, uh, the child from that product. It handles things like, uh, you know, originally it was just a DVI SDI analog box for HD uh, sources, but obviously nowadays we have uh, much higher resolution. So it handles everything from standard definition on composite, quite frankly, we still still go there once in a while, uh, all the way up to uh, 4K at 30 on a display port 1.1 uh, .1 or dual link DVI. So it's, it's uh, what we call the Swiss army knife uh, of video or your video toolboxes, uh, another way to refer to it. It's a problem solver. So uh, the base unit is um, capable of doing uh, up to 2560, 1600 at 60 hertz for its output and input. So you can take in very high resolution sources. Uh, and then of course, um, we can also do the 4K uh, at 30 or UHD at uh, 30. So for the, the 30 hertz broadcast market there, we do have a conversion product at 4K. And it's probably one of the, the lesser known features that ImagePro actually does handle 4K. Uh, but what we were showing at NAB this year was some additions that we've made to the Image Pro 2. One of those is our dual output card, uh, which was originally designed to handle uh, stereoscopic, but we kind of know where that went. Uh, S3D isn't quite as popular as it was a few years ago when we designed the box, but it gives us a dual output option as well. Now, for broadcast, this is huge because in taking in one input, say, well, your computer that we're talking over Skype with right now, you could bring that computer in HDMI into the Image Pro 2, and then you could uh, output an SD SDI and an HD SDI. Or you want to drive a local monitor at whatever its native resolution is and do a, a broadcast feed at 3G SDI, for instance. So it gives you two outputs coming off the same input. So you know variable resolutions and and um, the ability to send signals two different directions, two different ways. The other option that we were showing there, which is a, a little bit newer, is our audio card. And of course, it's kind of an image probe audio because it not only embeds and de-embeds, but it'll also uh, do uh, 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 conversions between different bit rates and, and, and sample frequencies and stuff. So uh, it also has uh, automatic delay that'll keep the audio coming in at the same time as the video and going out at the same time as the video. Or uh, you can actually turn that off and have zero delay on the audio, and because of the processing in the unit, you'll have one frame of delay on the video. You could actually use it to slightly align lip sync if you needed to, and you can manually dial in from zero all the way up to 300 milliseconds of audio delay. So really gives you a lot of handles to correct things. Again, it's a problem solver. Uh, in the case of like the Skype conversation we're having here, you could come in uh, HDMI or DisplayPort, uh, out of your computer, if you're going HDMI, the embedded audio can come along with it. We can then take that embedded audio and pass it right through the uh, to the SDI or 3G SDI signal and give you HDMI to 3G SDI embedded. Uh, it gives you handles to do, you know, zooming and cropping of images and really resizing. You know, maybe you want to zoom in just on the Skype window and get rid of all the the handles and and volume knobs and all that that are in your interface. It allows you to do that too. So. Uh, really for the for the broadcast where we're seeing Skype and YouTube and Facebook and all these things popping up, it's a great way to be able to go in and just zoom in on the content you want, uh, still preserving embedded audio, uh, as well as uh, it, it can pass the audio through to the uh, SDI and also de-embed at the same time. So you can pull off AES or analog, send that out to a mixing system if you wanted to, or a separate audio capture. So really a lot of versatility and power in that product. Uh, it's, it's one of those uh, thousand and one uses and everybody uses it slightly differently. Uh, in the rental and staging environment, it's, uh, you know, everybody brings two on show site and they go, well, what are you going to use that for? We don't know yet, but we will end up using it. So it's one of those things that would find a good home in a truck 
in the studio uh, in, in uh, graphics capture bays, uh, um, you know, render farms, that sort of thing. Okay, and more recently on, on another topic, Barco uh, added two new members to its modular event master screen management series at Infocom, uh, the S3 4K and the EC50. Would you mind telling us about those products and how they could potentially fit into the broadcast industry? Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, the the S3 4K is actually a derivative off of the uh, E2 uh, screen uh, event master system. So it's a screen management system that uh, basically it's anything in, anything out. So uh, it's all digital. Uh, we we are actually leaving analog behind on that product. But the S3 is basically a smaller subset of what the E2 does. So it's the same features of you know, scaling and uh, live compositing for for picture in picture. Uh, various you can come in at one resolution, go out at another resolution. Bring in multiple sources, create one one uh, composited feed. So if you wanted to do uh, you know three or four uh, different Skype windows at once and composite them in real time, and then uh, kick that out SDI, you could do that. Um, and uh, you know, with with extremely high performance scaling, of course. Uh, now the S3 basically just has less inputs, less outputs, less uh, uh, PIP capabilities, but still has all the same quality. Uh, the other product the e that you mentioned, the EC50, is our first hardware controller. Uh, we're bringing out a whole line of event controllers. Uh, it's the first step, and what it does is basically now uh, enables a user to have a more physical or tactile approach to switching an event. So it does give you that. Uh, that hardware approach to switching where not everybody's comfortable driving their uh, event or their broadcast with a mouse and, and keyboard. So it gives you a go button, I think. For, for those of us that are come from back a little ways, uh, we still like to have buttons and play, and play the piano, as it were. So it, it speeds up the programming process and, and uh, gives you a little bit more reliable execution of the show. What about yeah. background applications? So uh, we're really seeing the E2 and S3 for broadcast. We would never actually drive the news with it, for instance, uh, or, or a live broadcast, but where we're really seeing it coming in is driving the backdrops. So uh, obviously Barco's been in the backdrop business for quite some time. We've got the, the cube walls, we've got uh, tiles, we've got LED. What E2 does is it comes in and allows you to control that canvas. This is the screen management side of, of what E2 and S3 do. And what they allow you to do is come in with high resolution graphics to provide that, that really rich uh, content behind your, your presenter and then manage that. So maybe we want to put a picture in picture up when they're standing in front of a wall talking to uh, a, a, a remote report or a, a, a news article. We're seeing it in like the magazine shows where they'll stand up talk to a, a news article. Um, we also have it on uh, some broadcasts that I don't know if we're quite at liberty to talk about yet, but um, we it, it is being used in broadcast now on a very large LED wall backdrop. So, uh, and they're using that to bring in, again, live sources uh, behind the presenter, or uh, then obviously uh, pre-rendered content at uh, basically pixel for pixel um, uh, resolution. So in a, in a large uh, backdrop, you know, this could get up into 4K and above very quickly. So it gives you a lot of outputs and the ability to manage all of those outputs and inputs very easily. So you can actually create one big canvas if you wanted to uh, and treat that, that backdrop wall not as you know 12 individual monitors but as one screen. All right. And Eric, as we all know very well, 4K is such a hot topic right now and it has been for, for a little bit of time here. Um, what's your future outlook on, on 4K? 4K is definitely coming. Um, we're seeing it coming into the uh, events market as well. So we're fully prepared, and the entire system is, has been ready since uh, uh, 2014 to support 4K. We first showed the E2 system, or the Event Master system, uh, at Infocom 2014, doing uh, two 4K projectors blended into uh, about uh, 7,600 pixels wide by 2160 tall, so showing a very large background application there with two projectors. So from broadcast, definitely covering the uh, large backdrops with higher resolutions and keeping things more native, uh, definitely there for, for 4K. Next year we'll be uh, releasing additional uh, I.O. cards for our products that will support the new standards for 4K uh, with the DisplayPort 1.2 and HDMI 2.0. And obviously uh, as we're moving forward, whatever comes up with uh, 
4K, we're ready to, we're ready to take it on. So we've got a modular system that it's just a matter of swapping in and output cards. Uh, there's plenty of bandwidth on the back plane here to, to handle anything that comes at us. Thanks so much for chatting and, uh, and have yourself a great afternoon. My pleasure, Ryan. And uh, of course, if folks are interested on the social media side, they can find us at, uh, on Facebook. It's uh, Barco Fulsome Switchers. Uh, again, uh, Barco acquired Fulsom in 2004, but we still, still do have a, a bit of that reputation uh, following us along, uh, so we keep it in the social media that way as well. Image Processing Product Manager Eric Iverson of Barco. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, Ryan.